Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we will be covering the patch 8.2 Frost DK. Uh, if you are curious about how to play the class at a fundamental level, then make sure to check out my previous guide, which is linked up here. But if you're just interested in the 8.2 changes, which is what this video is, essentially in addition to the previous guide, then you have the right spot. So in this video, we'll cover essences, Azurite, how to use different essences, uh, trinkets, a little bit about bis list uh, stats, and basically just everything that's changed this patch. And of course, as always, I will be mostly focused on raiding. However, I might talk a little bit about Mythic Plus here and there. So the first thing that we cover is essences. On a single target for the major slot, you essentially have two choices, and that is the Condensed Life Force rank 3 or Lucid Dreams rank 3. In most situations, I suggest that you just run with the Condensed Life Force. However, this ends up being a little bit uh, fight time dependent. Depending on your kill time, one or the other might be better. But if you run Condensed Life Force major, you always want to have Lucid Dreams minor. However, if you end up running Lucid Dreams Major, you don't necessarily always want Condensed Life Force. In that case, you can either take Essence of Focusing Iris in your second minor slot um, or Ancient Flame. Or once your neck level is high enough, you just take both of those. So for single target, we can mix and match a little bit depending on the scenario. On cleave fights, such as Orgazoa, for example, Lucid Dreams becomes hands down the go-to choice for your major slot because most of your damage on those cleave fights will come from your Breath of Sindragosa cleaving. So extending that breath as long as possible will be overall the best damage option. Um, there is something to be said for burst cleave fights where the adds spawn and you have a short amount of time to kill them. If you think of fights such as Queen Ashara, where in the second phase, all those devoted end up uh, moving to the middle and you have about five to six seconds to kill them. In those situations, Blood of the Enemy Major might actually be better because it gives you a higher damage output over a shorter period of time. And then in your minor slot, you just run World Bane rank three. And once your neck level is high enough, you can run both Blood of the Enemy and World Vein if you end up running that Lucid Dreams Major. So moving on for, to Azurite, it's basically unchanged from the last patch. You essentially want Frozen Tempest and Icy Citadel. Those are the two main ones that you want on a single target. Uh, Loyal to the End is also quite good if you have a few people in your raid use it. If you're the only one using it, it doesn't really get that much value. But if, for example, half your DPS or half your raid in general uses it, it's a lot more valuable. And then for the tier 3, you just want overwhelming power. That is hands down the best choice. Um, Gun Ripper does have a little bit of value on fights where execute is a little more important. Then, whenever it comes to cleave fights and AoE fights, you essentially just want to drop your Icy Citadels for Echoing Howls. But you st you're still going to take Frozen Tempest or Loyal to the End if other people are using it as well. Now quickly going over how to use the different essences, um, it's fairly straightforward, but Condensed Life Force is a 3 minute cooldown so that can make it a little bit awkward for Frost. Essentially you want to use it right before your Empower Rune Weapon and Breath of Sindragosa, so then you get that 5% damage amp and the haste that ramps up on you uh, for the entirety of your breath. Then. The second use of Condensed Life Force can be a little bit tricky. Most of the time, if the fight length is long enough, you want to delay the second use of Condensed Life Force until your third Breath of Sintragosa. However, if you have a shorter fight where you know you will only get two breaths in, then it is worth delaying the second breath until it lines up with the second Condensed Life Force. So essentially using second breath at 3 minutes instead of at that 2.15 mark. Second essence here, Blood of the Enemy. So on single target, you essentially just want to use it when there are about five seconds left on your Pillar of Frost. And this is just to maximize that strength and crit bonus that you get towards the end of Pillar 
whenever your strength is uh, ramped as high as possible. And this is typically where you will also cold heart. So you will get a huge extra bonus from that if it does crit. Um, for cleave and for adds, if you are syncing up the cooldowns, then just use it whenever the adds spawn essentially. And again, this will kind of depend on what type of ads you're fighting. If they're up for a long time, then you don't need to be as precise about using it whenever they spawn. But if there are ads like the Queen Ashara ads that are up for a very brief amount of time, then just make sure to sync it to hit every single ads and ideally inside your cooldowns. So Memory of the Loose Dreams is should be fairly straightforward to use. Uh, you should aim to use it about 20 seconds into your Breath of Sindragosa. However, this is not a clear-cut rule because it will depend on your resource generation, how lucky you got with procs, um, how you were getting your runes back. So if at any point you feel like you're starting to hit that point in your Breath of Sindragosa where you're not really having enough resources to keep it up, that's when you should hit Lucid Dreams. Uh, I wish I could tell you a straightforward rule or a, like a timestamp into your Breath of Sindragosa when you want to hit this, but it will kind of depend on your procs, on your RNG, on your resource gen. Essence of the Focusing Iris. This essence, um, obviously for very short AoE burst, extremely, extremely strong. Um, so if you end up using this as your major, just use it whenever you can cleave the most adds with it. But the only rule is, do not use it during Breath of Sindragosa, and do not use it during Pillar of Frost. Everything else goes, just try to hit as many things as you can with it. So next let's cover Trinkets a little bit. Uh, there's quite a few from this raid. Uh, from Mythic Plus, Butcher's Block is essentially the only decent proc trinket that we still have. Most Frost DKs nowadays are running a, a double on you setup, which I will talk about a little bit later. Then from the raid, the only passive trinket that I would even consider is the Dribbling Ink Pod. And even this for Heroic, not great because the, sh the fight length is so short that you're not going to be stacking it up. And on Mythic, again, not great on the first few bosses because they're kind of shorter fights. But then once you get to those longer fights that have an important execute, um, I would actually consider using Dribbling Ink Pod, depending on what other choices you have. So if you didn't know this, you can actually use a damage modifier whenever the ink pod is about to proc, which is sub 30%, uh, usually procs around 29%. But for example, if you have blood of the enemy uh, as your major essence and your ink pod is about to proc, you can go ahead and use blood of the enemy on the target and it will take, it will have an increased crit chance and it will take increased crit damage. So if your ink pod crits, there is a huge value from that. Uh, but that applies to other modifiers that give you stats such as versatility or if they increase the damage your target takes in any capacity, such as condensed life force. Um, now for the unused trinkets, there's quite a few that you could be using. Ashwain's Razor Coral is one of the better ones in my opinion. One of the best trinkets for Frost and you essentially just want to sync it with condensed life force. Um, and you want to sync it with Breath of Sintragosa. So you sync, you press this trinket, or you press your um, Condensed Life Force, you empower Rune Weapon, Trinket, Breath of Sintragosa, and you get the crit bonus for your entirety of Pillar of Frost. Now, if you run Condensed Life Force, you will obviously only be able to use that every other breath, but you can still just go ahead and use your Coral Trinket before every single breath. Okay, now for what I consider to be the three strongest trinkets that are currently in the game. Shara's Font of Power. As an unused trinket, this is probably the strongest that you can get. And it's a two minute cooldown, so it lines up with Breath of Sindragosa. It can be a little bit tricky to get the full channel off, um, except for the first channel that you do pre-combat. But any subsequent channels, you essentially just want to do um, in that phase where you're kind of waiting for your runes to charge back. 
Before every single Breath of Sindragosa, you want to at least triple obliterate to get their runic power. And then while you're waiting on those runes, you channel this trinket going into your Breath of Sindragosa. And then your very first use of this trinket is obviously before the fight even starts. And you want to channel it at about 4.5 seconds on the pull timer, which gives you about a second to actually use the pre-pot. Um, it, this trinket lasts 30 seconds, so super strong with breath. It lasts most of the duration of breath, depending on how well you keep it up. Um, but it's also ha it also has great synergy with double on you setup, which again, I will mention in a little bit. Second super strong trinket, Lurker's Insidious Gift, and this comes, comes from COS. So I only have a 410 version of this, and it's still one of the best trinkets that I have. Um, it's again a 30 second trinket or it lasts 30 seconds, but this one gives us mastery So on AoE Lurkin's, Lurker's insidious gift it will obviously be very very strong And again depending on the trinket setup that you have you might end up using this trinket either first or second But I will mention that in a little bit and then the third strongest trinket in my opinion is the notorious gladiators badge and that obviously comes from PvP, and it lasts 15 seconds and gives you a huge boost of strength, again, on a 2-minute cooldown. So Badge is probably the best when used in a double on-use setup. In a single on-use, um, Font of Power and Insidious Gift are probably better um, at equal eye levels. So now that you know kind of what trinkets are good, Let's talk about the trinket setup that you actually want to run. So the, the traditional single on use, single on proc trinket is super easy to actually play with. You just use your on use trinket whenever you go into Breath of Sindragosa, and that's basically the end of the story. With a double on use setup, it becomes a little bit tricky because it will depend on what two trinkets you're running. If you're running Ashara's Font of Power, this will essentially always be the first trinket that you want to use going into your Breath of Sindragosa, because it lasts 30 seconds and it gives you main stat. So, for example, if I'm running Ashara's Font of Power and the Notorious Gladiator's Badge, pre-combat, 4 seconds before the pull timer, I channel my Font of Power. I go into the fight, I do my triple obliterate, I wait a little bit, I go into Breath of Sindragosa. So I use Empowered Rune Weapon, Breath of Sindragosa, and Pillar of Frost. Now, um, the, whenever I used my Font of Power, it started a 20 second cooldown on my second trinket. Since I used Font of Power about 5 seconds uh, or 4.5 seconds before the fight, essentially about 15 seconds into the fight, my second trinket will be up. So as soon as the second trinket is up, you want to activate it, because this will clip about 10 seconds of overlap into uh, your double on you setup. So for about 10 seconds, you will have the benefit from both trinkets. And this is essentially where you want to use your cold heart, or if you have any type of burst damage, if you're running blood of the enemy, um, anything like that that does a burst of damage, this is where you want to be using it. Um, if you're not running those, then obviously this is just a huge damage overlap where your Breath of Sindragosa and all your other abilities will just be doing a ton of damage. On the other hand, if you're using a different setup such as Font of Power and Razor Coral, then again, Font of Power first, Razor Coral whenever it's up. It becomes a little bit trickier um, whenever you go to some of the non-meta trinket combos like Insidious Gift plus Badge. With that, you want to use Insidious Gift first, Badge second. Um, but essentially, the, the rule that I try to go by is use the longest lasting trinket, lo longest lasting trinket first and your shorter trinket second. Now, Font of Power and Insidious Gift are the same duration. They're both 30 seconds. However, I still believe that you get a little more DPS from Font of Power, so I tend to use that first. So the double on use trinket has kind of become the meta for Frost DKs, and there's a reason for it. It is super, super powerful if you have the right trinkets, and it's actually something that I've kind of enjoyed playing around with.
Okay, next let's talk a little bit about benthic and special items because there's quite a few slots nowadays which are bis and they do not come from the raid so for benthic items it's essentially the same as unholy the wave blade farseer's arm guards deal frost damage the kanas restride their boots they increase your crit damage uh these are probably the highest priority on frost Cohen's Deep Sea Handguards, they send out droplets, which can either deal frost damage or heal your allies. Um, and then uh, Zanjir Scale Guard Great Belt, which is only going to be BIS on Orgazoa and Zaku, and this is the belt that increases your damage against aberrations. From Ashara, the Eternity Keeper's Great Belt, uh, which procs damage every 2 minutes, is also quite good. And then the BIS weapon is Death's End, and that's obviously the weapon from Zakul. And you want at least one of these, basically no matter what. Even if you have it at the lower eye level, it's probably going to be worth it. And with this weapon, it just increases the attack speed that you have. And essentially, you go by the same weapon rules. You go with the highest eye level weapon in main hand, and lowest eye level weapon in your offhand. And if this is your lowest eye level weapon, you can just put it in your offhand and you'll still get the benefit. And also note that if you have two of these, you don't get any extra benefits. So just having one is enough. Next, let's talk about the stats. So the stats are essentially the same as they've been the rest of this expansion. You go with mastery over crit over haste over versatility. And this is a good balanced stat weight that will do well in raids. However, if you're really trying to min-max each individual fight, on a pure single target, technically, uh, crit is super close to mastery. However, the more targets you're cleaving, the further away mastery gets from crit. So you will see DK's stacks on ridiculous amount of mastery for some of the later bosses, such as Zakul, where they will have about 2,000 mastery and like 11 to 1,200 crit. Whereas on the first few bosses that are essentially pure single target, your crit and mastery ratios will be a lot closer together. Now for potions, um, in most encounters, you just go with Unbridled Fury because it deals the most boss damage. If you're cleaving two targets, then you might want to go with the Superior Strength Potion. And if you're cleaving a large number of targets, so 5+, plus, then you can go with the Empower Proximity Potion. But in 95% of situations, you just use Unbridled Fury. And then for food, again, it will depend on kind of how far you're trying to min-max. I suggest using Mastery Food in essentially all situations, but if you're trying to get a little bit more crit for single target, then you can do that for some of the pure single target fights. Talents I'm going to mention very, very briefly here, because essentially only one talent changed from the build that we used in Old Year and at the beginning of BOD, and that's going from Frostworm's Fury to Gathering Storm. Now, especially whenever you have Triple Frozen Tempest, Gathering Storm is absolutely insane, and since Haste kind of gained a little bit of value for us, you also have more runes, so overall you're able to stack Gathering Storm up more uh, higher than you were at the beginning of the expansion. And sometimes, especially during Lust, you're also able to refresh your Remorseless Winter and keep those 10 stacks of Gathering Storm rolling for two Remorseless Winters in a row. Uh, Frostworm's Fury is still good in niche situations. Uh, whenever you have a huge burst of AoE damage and you really need to kill those targets quickly, obviously the talent is good. But in most scenarios, and I'm talking about every single boss fight in the raid, you will run Gathering Storm. And the rest of the talent build is essentially the cookie cutter build that we've been using for the previous few tiers in the expansion. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I am more than happy to help you out. And if you want to chat a little more extensively, make sure to join my Discord where we have constant conversations about DK. Please keep in mind that some of the things that I said during this video might not be um, a hard and fast rule, but will kind of depend on your gear a little bit, especially when it comes to stat weights and some of the trinkets and best items. So if you're uncertain about something, just go ahead and go to raid bots and sim your character, and that will give you the definite answer.
Again, thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you to all the patrons who support this channel and my Twitch subscribers. Um, and if you want to get early access to my guides, you can also join on my Patreon, which is linked above and below.